Hello and welcome to our new presentation, Political Theatre. India is the largest democracy in the world. The twists and turns in the world of Indian politics attract everyone's attention. Several developments take place simultaneously across the country, making it difficult for the people to keep a track of these political developments and understand their impact. In the next half an hour, we'll bring to you the top political events of this week and decode and analyze them for you. So let's begin with the big story of the week. In the last few days, the agitation by farmers have kept several state governments and center on its toes. Demanding loan waivers and a higher price for their crops, farmers have been protesting across several states. While some states and the center have announced some measures to help these farmers, the protests continue and the opposition says that not enough is being done to help the agriculture sector. The temple town of Madhya Pradesh, Mansoor, became the epicentre of farmers' protests in the country last week, witnessing violent agitations between farmers and police. Five farmers were killed on 6th of June after police fired at protesters, demanding better prices in the drought-ravaged region that recorded a farmer suicide every five hours in 2016 and 17. To defuse the situation, Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Johan sat on an indefinite fast to restore normalcy in the state, a move which was dubbed political drama by the opposition parties. The MP government also announced financial aid of 1 crore rupees each to the families of those killed in the agitation. Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi was arrested briefly while on the way to Mansoor, only allowed to meet agitating farmers on the border. Jyotiraditya Sindhya and Gujarat's Patel Kota Stir spearhead Hardik Patel was also turned back before they could enter Mansoor. जो बरबर लाठी चार्ज हुआ है, गोली चली है, उन किसानों को कंसोल करने, उनकी मांग के साथ खड़ा होने के लिए हम योग यहाँ आए। मैं फिर किसानों को आश्वस्त करना चाहूँगा कि एक-एक प्याज खरीदा जाएगा। चिंता मत करना, तुमने सहना से बदल गया। Protests spread onto other states with agitations in Maharashtra, Punjab and Tamil Nadu. Farmers in Maharashtra went on a rampage, vandalized vehicles and poured litres of milk on highways, demanding a loan waiver. Succumbing to pressure, the Devendra Fadnavis government announced farm loan waivers worth 30,000 crore rupees. However, distancing itself from Maharashtra's decision, the centre sent a clear message to other states that loan waiver expense must be borne by the state themselves. Making the going tough for the BJP, it's a lie Shiv Sena warned of a stern action if the loan waiver is not implemented in a month. Centre, though, announced its own measures by extending interest subsidy on short-term crop loans. This again was termed as a token measure by the opposition. States which want to go in for these kind of uh, schemes will have to generate them from their own resources. Beyond that, as the central government, I have nothing more to say. कि ये जो आपकी तत्वतः वाली जो बात है, वो हमें मंजूर नहीं है। हमने किसानों से वादा किया है सरसकट सात बारा कोरा करने की, वो ही करना पड़ेगा आपको। As per the latest data from the National Crime Records Bureau, 5,650 farmers committed suicide in 2014, which rose by 42%. To 8,007 in 2015. The unofficial numbers may be far higher. The average income of farmers, according to the latest report of the National Sample Survey Organization, is just around 6,000 rupees per month. In 17 Indian states, farmers earn less than 1,800 rupees per month, making it impossible for them to get out of the cycle of debt. Experts say farm loan waivers only act as a short-term rescue plan and cannot be the long-term solution to the problems faced by the farmers across the country. With no long-lasting solution in sight and protest by several farmers' organizations, K 
continuing to attract attention of the government, this issue is likely to resonate in the political corridors for some time at least. And for more on this story, we have with us a senior journalist and political editor of First Post, Mr. Sanjay Singh. Uh, so welcome uh, to the show. First and foremost question uh, which comes to mind uh, as far as uh, the farmer situation is concerned is that there are several measures which are being taken by the government, be it loan waiver or uh, you know, extending uh, the interest subvention scheme, increasing the MSP. But these all seem to be short-term ad hoc measures. What, is, what can be the long-term uh, plan to you know, get rid of this problem uh, which the farmers have been facing for quite a few years? Quite right, Vishal. In fact, uh, the current uh, problem, uh, the kind of uh, situation that we are seeing, the turmoil, the violence, the hesitation, and subsequently, because this also creates some kind of so social tension, this all emanates from one simple thing, that loan waiver. And loan waiver, for all you know, is not a solution to the agrarian crisis that is there in, across the country. In fact, loan waiver, you, announcement by the BJP government there in UP as kind of promised by Prime Minister Narendra Modi and BJP President during the, election. during the elections. That has created a spiral. That spiral, I don't know where it, is it going to stop. Maharashtra government announced loan waiver. UP, remember UP loan waiver was conditional. conditional. They had cert certain conditions. Maharashtra loan waiver does not have any conditions. And that's a huge, huge burden on Nikshik. 35,000 crore, 40,000 crore. If you go into cumulative, I don't know, you'll you'll be surprised as to where the number goes. So actually, these populist measures have to be restrained by the government. And in fact, one after another kind of... But, the, but the, keep on uh, interestingly, the charges from the opposition is that not enough is being done by the government. Uh, you know, these loan waivers, these ad hoc measures are not enough. So what can be the long-term political fallout for uh, BJP? Not only at the centre, but also in these states where it is uh, running the government, be it Maharashtra, be it Madhya Pradesh. See, lately, if you see the political criticism by the rival political parties are not on substance of the issue, are not issue-based. They are more on the side of rhetoric. Actually, the violence that was seen in Madhya Pradesh, six persons uh, getting killed by police firing, that has created a situation whereby opposition parties sense a killing against the BJP and thereby the, you, you see a lot of political leaders going there and a great issue is there. Mm -hmm. Farmer situation has to be discussed in parliament, has to be taken very seriously. But if you go on ad hoc measures and also the kind of political divide that we have, I don't know, this this problem cannot find a solution out there. Okay, so, so there is a likelihood that uh, the opposition parties might utilize this particular issue to try and corner uh, the BJP at one stage or the other. Let's take a short break here, but when we come back, we will tell you about the fluid political situation in Tamil Nadu and the political build-up for the presidential poll. Welcome back. The election commission has sounded the bigel for the presidential poll. Both the ruling NDA and a closely knit group of opposition parties have now intensified their efforts to find a candidate for the top post. While several opposition parties are keen on the prospect of a consensus candidate for the post of the president of India, the NDA is now reaching out to other opposition parties in a bid to strengthen its numbers, if at all, there is an election for the top post. The process of filing nominations for the July 17th presidential poll began this week with the Election Commission issuing a notification in this regard. The nomination process will continue till 28th June. The consultation process on the presidential candidate has gained momentum in both camps, BJP-led NDA and a group of opposition parties led by Congress. The leaders of the 10-member subgroup of opposition parties went into a huddle on Wednesday on this issue but decided to wait for the government to announce its candidate before finalizing its strategy. स्वस्थ परंपरा लोकतंत्र का है कि सत्ताधारी दल क्या करता है पहले वो क्या सोचते हैं लोग क्या बता रहे हैं किसको कैंडिडेट बना रहे हैं तो फिर हम लोग बैठे हैं पहले तय किया है कि सरकार के ओर से जो नाव का नाम का प्रस्ताव आएगा उसके बाद ही हम आगे की अपनी रणनीति तय करेंगे 
After a prolonged silence on the issue, the ruling camp also sprung into action. BJP chief Amit Shah constituted a three-member committee comprising Union Ministers Rajnath Singh, Arun Jaitley and M. Venkaya Naidu to hold consultations with the NDA allies and the opposition. As part of the BJP's outreach policy towards opposition, Rajnath Singh and Venkaya Naidu met Congress President Sonia Gandhi on Friday to discuss the presidential polls, followed by a meeting with CPM General Secretary Sita Ram Yachure. However, the meeting remained inconclusive with no names being discussed. <laughs> रूलिंग पार्टी विपक्ष के नेताओं से कोई एक नाम करेगी या दो तीन नाम करेंगी तीन चार नाम करेगी और उस नाम पे सहमति बनाने की कोशिश करेंगे प्रयास करेंगे तो ऐसा तो सरकार ने कहा कि अभी हमारे पास कोई नाम नहीं है क्योंकि उन्होंने अपनी पार्टी में ही अभी उसके निर्णय नहीं लिया है वो आए हमने कहा कोई आपसे पूछा जरूर आपने कहा कोई है आपके पास जो प्रपोजल तो कहा कोई अभी तक किसी नाम पे हम हम जो है तय नहीं किए तो अगर खुद नाम नहीं तय किए हैं तो हम किससे सपोर्ट किए द बीजेपी मिनिस्टर्स ऑल्सो इंटरेक्टेड विद अदर ऑपोजिशन लीडर्स एंड सोर्सेस से दे हैव रिसीव्ड पॉजिटिव रिस्पांस फ्रॉम एसपी चीफ मुलायम सिंह एंड एनसीपी सुप्रीमो शरद पवार गवर्नमेंट्स एमिसरीज हैव ऑल्सो हेल्ड टॉक्स विद अदर ऑपोजिशन लीडर्स लाइक मायावती शरद यादव डी राजा एंड राम गोपाल यादव we have just exchanged views because he was not there yesterday he went to mizoram both of us will be talking to different parties and uh, on 17th uh, finance minister will come back once he comes back we will meet together and then we will exchange information and then move forward while some names are doing rounds in the political corridors both sides are yet to take final call on who will be their official candidate or they will settle for a consensus nominee for the top post If the elections are held in case both the NDA and the opposition feel their candidates then the results will be announced on July 20th the term of present incumbent Pranab Mukherjee comes to an end on 24th of July Let's take a analytical viewpoint uh, on this particular issue from uh, our political analyst out here Mr Sanjay Singh this is becoming a very interesting situation out here the NDA is not at all willing to give out the name there are a lot of speculations though uh the opposition parties want to have a candidate but they do not have sufficient numbers and uh, the nda is now reaching out to the opposition in the last leg uh, there's just few days left for the nomination now how do you see the situation developing out here will there be a contest or will both sides be able to find a consensus candidate we shall see nda has clear cut majority out there in parliament also in assembly and if you see total value of votes mm-hmm. india has about 55% of 55%, votes yeah. and now they have started reaching out to opposition parties uh, they met sonia gandhi they met sita ram yachuri they met sharad pawar they met sharad yadav and so on so forth. and there are positive indication yeah. sources say from sharad pawar and mulayam singh yadav <laughs> yeah that's quite that, interesting that, 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 that they might support the ruling party uh, presidential candidate but the fact remains i don't know whether the people who are reaching out to these leaders in opposition parties that even they know the name of the candidate the nda has not decided name of the candidate okay. and two persons who would actually be knowing if at all the uh-huh. names if that has been decided they are the prime minister narendra modi and bjp president uh, amit shah and they and they are not expected to divulge it before Precise. the last date precisely they uh, narendra modi so far in 3 years of his governance at the center he has been known to spring surprises last minute surprises and therefore all those names which are being talked about in the media are actually intelligent speculations not informed reporting so, so there there lies the problem so my assessment is you will get a candidate on june 23rd because june 23rd uh, june 22nd june 23rd nomination has to be filed because prime minister is flying out, flying out yeah okay so june sir. 21st is international yoga day so f- don't expect announcement on that particular <laughs> so let's wait and watch as to who might finally be the presidential candidate of the nda this time around and whether or not there will be a contest meanwhile let's take a look at another state and another different story in tamil nadu the political situation remains fluid with no signs of truce between the two factions of the AIA DMK 
the opposition led by DMK has now utilized this opportunity to corner the faction-ridden ruling party on the issue of use of money power during the trust vote in February this year. Fishers and ruling Tamil Nadu government resurfaced after an AIADMK MLA in a sting video claimed that money was offered to party MLAs to support the Sasikala camp ahead of the trust vote in February. In a video footage aired by a TV channel, Madurai South MLA SS Sarvanan, who defected to OPS camp, was seen admitting that Sasikala camp offered MLAs anything between 2 crore rupees to 6 crores. Furthermore, in what could cause a dent of the OPS clean image, the MLA revealed that former Chief Minister OPS camp was also willing to pay money to MLAs to switch sides. While OPS summoned Sarvanan for an appropriate explanation, the MLA claimed that the footage was doctored. The development, which came only a day ahead of the Tamil Nadu Assembly session, raised political temperature in the state. All DMK members were evicted from the assembly for raising the issue on the first day of the assembly session on Wednesday. DMK's working president Stalin was detained for staging protests outside the assembly premises. DMK also moved the Madras High Court seeking a probe into the alleged payoffs. DMK and its allies Congress and IUML staged a walkout from the assembly on this issue on the second day of session. There are so many charges against the ruling party. The MLAs, the, 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 uh, yesterday, the TV, which is uh, te telecasted, it said the MLAs are sold. This is very shameful. AIADMK split into two factions after the death of their leader JJ Lalita last year. Former Chief Minister and Amma's most trusted Lieutenant Paneer Silvam revolted against Jay Lalita's close aide VK Sasikala, alleging he was forced to make way for her elevation as the head of the state. In ensuing political developments, Palani Swami was elected Chief Minister via trust vote after Sasikala was held guilty in a disproportionate assets case. Both factions of AIADMK agreed on a plan for merger. However, this week, Paneer Silvam dissolved the panel which was formed to take forward unification of the rival factions, accusing the Palani Swami faction of not coming up with constructive suggestions. While AIADMK has a comfortable mandate to rule the state, a deep rift within the party is a matter of serious concern. Both groups of AIADMK have logged horns on two leaf election symbol of the party and with no signs of truce between the warring factions, the fate of the 45-year-old AIADMK hangs in the balance. Senior journalist and our political analyst Sanjay Singh is still with us. Uh, Mr. Sanjay, how do you see this situation unfolding in Tamil Nadu, specifically for the ruling party AIADMK? Will the party finally, uh, you know, the, both the factions, will they be able to uh, have some truce between them? Will they unite again? Or it's the end of the unification process of AIADMK? See, Tamil Nadu politics has been guided by charismatic political leaders. Jayalalitha was one such charismatic leader. She had thumping majority out there. She was the one who won uh, for second consecutive time these elections Legal for election. Tamil Nadu, defying the anti-incumbency and also the kind of kind of which is which itself was a unique feat in Tamil Nadu precisely politics. since her death developments out there in AI DMK have been very very unfortunate the latest incident where some string operation was carried where MLAs admit that they were offered rupees varying from two to six crore rupees and when rupee was not coming they were offered gold mm -hmm. these are very very serious charges remember these are very serious charges unfortunately the state assembly 
speaker has not taken any action on that particular count somebody in fact that matter will go to the court and some action will be initiated in due course at least i am hopeful so, so no, no further sign of truce between both the warring, warring See, factions these the truce is being talked about but the fact remains eps and ops group where do they go when you have cash transactions taking place between one faction and vis-a-vis -vis another faction, when cash becomes more important than principle or any other thing, then actually it's very, very difficult to arrive at a truce. And both have filed petitions for that particular symbol. symbol. So, so it seems a lot of uh, political drama is yet to be played out in Tamil Nadu politics. Uh, we'll take a short break here, but when we come back, we will tell you about what else is happening in the political arena across the nation. Stay tuned. Welcome back. From Gorkha Janmukti Morcha protests in Darjeeling to loss of face for Congress in Karnataka, let's take a look at what else made news in the political arena this week. Darjeeling is reeling under violence with Gorkha Janmukti Morcha and the Mamata Banerjee led state government at loggerheads over Gorkha land and the introduction of Bengali language in the schools in Hills. GJM, which controls the Gorkha land territorial administration, has called an indefinite shutdown of all state and GTA offices from June 12th. While the West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee has said the state government will curb the violent protests, GJM has sought the centre's intervention in the matter. Centre has rushed paramilitary forces to assist the local administration to restore peace and normalcy and asked for a report on the prevailing situation from the state government. The Meghalaya Assembly passed a resolution this week against the centre's recent notification banning cattle trade in animal markets for slaughter. Meghalaya became the second state after Kerala to pass a resolution through the state assembly opposing the notification on cattle trade issued last month. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court has sought a response from the centre on a petition challenging the notification. The government has clarified that it will review the decision after taking into account views of all stakeholders. Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi has accused the Narendra Modi-led central government of forcing everyone into silence. Speaking at a function of the National Herald newspaper in Bengaluru, he said that the power of truth is being completely replaced with the truth of power and everybody who attempts to speak this truth and stand for it is being pushed aside. Gandhi also alleged that thousands of journalists were not being allowed to write what they wanted to. As part of his 90-day tour across various states, BJP President Amit Shah visited Maharashtra on a three-day tour. During his visit, Shah met party leaders and workers besides corporate czars, intellectuals and Bollywood bigwigs. The visit of the BJP president is also said to be an effort to mend the ties with ally Shiv Sena, which has been engaged in a war of words with the BJP on several issues. The ruling Congress suffered a major setback in the Karnataka Legislative Council as a no-confidence motion it moved against the House Chairman was defeated by United Opposition by a single vote. D.H. Shankaramurthy, a BJP veteran, will continue to remain chairman as the motion against him was defeated with JDS continuing to support him after rejecting overtures by the Congress to join hands. While the motion for removal of Shankaramurthy secured 36 votes in its favour, 37 were against it. In the 75-member council, the Congress has 33 members, BJP 23, JDS 13 besides five independents and the chairman. Several political situations led to interesting comments by political leaders in a bid to counter each other's claims. We have shortlisted the best ones for you in Face Off. Ganatanji ki hoga, bahut acha ek dharna, bagara bagara, julu, sab aise hoga. Maga strike nahi hoga. Strike abhi dekho na, ye to emergency ho gaya. Main bhi strike ka paksh mein nahi hoon. लेकिन जबरदस्ती वो आदमी को दबाने का काम करेगा तो ऑटोमेटिकली हो जाएगा ना तो लास्ट ममता जी को कोई मैसेज देना चाहेंगे मैं रिक्वेस्ट करना चाहता हूं वो एक सीए में मैं हम लोग आदर संस्कार करना चाहता हूं उसको डिवाइड एंड पॉलिसी नहीं करना चाहिए कॉम्प्रोमाइज कोनो बुमा दिए बुमार होय ना कॉम्प्रोमाइज कोनो बुमा दिए लाठी दिए आगुन दिए होय ना सुतरंग आई नाइने पथे चलबे 
যারা অন্যায় করেছে কেস কাচারি যা হয়েছে সেটা প্রশাসনের ব্যাপার প্রশাসন প্রশাসনের মতো আইনত बहुत स्वागत करता हूं ये करना चाहिए देखिए हमारे कितने मंदिर आज सरकार के नियंत्रण में है क्योंकि वो कह रहे हैं कि वित्तीय घोटाला हुआ है एक भी मस्जिद नहीं है एक भी वाकफ बोर्ड नहीं है एक भी क्रिश्चियन का चर्च नहीं है हां ये एक तरफा जो हिंदुओं को निशाना बनाया गया था कांग्रेस के राज में उसको संतुलन में लाना चाहिए मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि ये नेक नियति से काम नहीं हो रहा ये सही है कि वक्त बोर्ड में कहीं ना कहीं कुछ गड़बड़ हो सकती है लेकिन उसके लिए एक इंक्वायरी की जाती है अब उसके बाद आप वक्त बोर्ड के जो चेयरमैन हैं उनको हटा रहे हैं उसके बाद आपको चाहिए सरकार में कायदे के लोगों को रखें और उसको ठीक करें सीबीआई की इंक्वायरी कराने का मतलब यह है कि जो माइनॉरिटी के इदारे हैं उनको टेरराइज करना और उनको भयमीत करके और उनके काम को खराब करने की कोशिश करना उनके काम को रोकने की कोशिश करना भावना बदले की भावना और नफरत की आग में डूबी हुई केंद्र सरकार आम आदमी पार्टी के खिलाफ काम कर रही है मेरी जानकारी है आज सीबीआई मनीष सिसोदिया का स्टेटमेंट रिकॉर्ड करने पहुंची है ये सीबीआई का एक इंक्वायरी का तरीका है और मुझे लगता है कि जो भी आरोपी है उसको जांच एजेंसियों के साथ सहयोग करना चाहिए सो दिस वॉज द समरी ऑफ ट्विस्ट एंड टर्न ऑफ द वर्ल्ड ऑफ इंडियन पॉलिटिक्स विल कम बैक अगेन नेक्स्ट वीक विद सम मोर इंटरेस्टिंग इंफॉर्मेशन एंड एनालिसिस टिल देन वी विल लीव यू विद सम इंटरेस्टिंग विजुअल्स फ्रॉम द पॉलिटिकल अरीना कीप वॉचिंग राज्यसभा टेलीविजन